Hi everybody! Welcome to Pharma Explora. Today we are going to discuss one of the most important pharmacokinetic parameters, the volume of distribution. The volume of distribution represents the theoretical volume of fluid into which a drug would need to be distributed to achieve the observed plasma concentration. Let's take a simple example. Suppose we administer 100 milligrams of a drug and measure a plasma concentration of 5 milligrams per liter at the time x, then the volume of distribution at the time of x would be 20 liters. It is a hypothetical concept and does not necessarily correspond to a real anatomical space. To understand this concept more easily, let's have a look at water compartments in the body. The human body is composed of about 60% water. The water inside the human body is distributed in two main compartments, intracellular fluid compartment and extracellular fluid compartment. Intracellular fluid compartment is the fluid inside cells, while extracellular fluid compartment is the fluid outside cells. Total body water amount is considered to be 42 liters in a 70 kilogram individual. Out of this, the intracellular fluid compartment consists of 28 liters, whereas the extracellular compartment consists of 14 liters. The extracellular compartment is further subdivided into plasma and interstitial fluid compartments. It is generally considered that a 70 kilogram individual has 10 liters of interstitial fluid and 4 liters of plasma. The intracellular fluid compartment and extracellular fluid compartment are separated by the cell membrane, but they are constantly exchanging fluids and solutes. Intracellular fluid compartment makes up about two-thirds of the body's total water content, while extracellular fluid compartment makes up about one-third. The extracellular fluid compartment is essential for cellular metabolism, protein synthesis, and other cellular processes. In contrast, the extracellular fluid compartment transports nutrients and waste products to and from cells. The extracellular fluid compartment is further subdivided into two compartments, the plasma compartment and the interstitial fluid compartment. The plasma compartment is the liquid portion of blood. Plasma is composed of water, electrolytes, proteins, and other solutes. Plasma is responsible for transporting nutrients, waste products, and hormones throughout the body. Large drug molecules or those tightly bound to plasma proteins cannot easily escape the bloodstream. They remain confined to the plasma compartment, which is about 6% of the body weight, or around 4 liters in a 70 kilogram person. Aminoglycoside antibiotics are examples of drugs with this distribution pattern. The interstitial fluid compartment is the fluid that surrounds cells and tissues. Interstitial fluid is composed of water, electrolytes, and some proteins. It is responsible for exchanging nutrients and waste products between cells and blood. Small water-soluble drugs can pass through the tiny gaps between capillary cells, endothelial slit junctions, into the interstitial fluid. However, due to this hydrophilic, or the water-loving nature, they cannot penetrate cell membranes to reach the intracellular fluid. As a result, these drugs distribute within the extracellular fluid, which includes plasma and interstitial fluid. The extracellular fluid, 20% of the body weight, or approximately 14 liters, in a 70 kilogram individual. This type of distribution is common for hydrophilic drugs like penicillin and gentamicin. When a drug enters the body from whatever route of administration, it can spread among the three main water compartments, blood plasma, interstitial fluid, and intracellular fluid, or get stored in specific cells. Small fat-soluble drugs can easily cross the endothelial slit junctions to enter the interstitial fluid and further infiltrate cell membranes to reach the intracellular fluid. Consequently, these drugs distribute throughout a much larger volume approximately 60% of the body weight, or around 42 liters in a 70 kilogram person. Examples of drugs with this distribution pattern include ethanol and barbiturates. During pregnancy, 
Drugs can transfer to the fetus, expanding the drug's distribution volume. Additionally, drugs that accumulate in fat, like thiopental, may also exhibit unusually high distribution volumes. Now let's have a look into the apparent volume of distribution and volume of distribution. Apparent volume of distribution is a theoretical volume that is calculated using the initial plasma concentration and the total amount of drug administered. It is a simplified measure of drug distribution that does not take into account the distribution of the drug over time. Apparent volume of distribution is often used to estimate the volume of distribution early in the drug's course of action, when the drug is still being distributed throughout the body. On the other hand, Volume of distribution is a theoretical volume that represents the amount of fluid in the body that a drug would need to be evenly distributed in to achieve the observed plasma concentration. In other words, it is the hypothetical volume into which the drug has distributed throughout the body. Volume of distribution is a pharmacokinetic parameter that is used to calculate drug dosing and to predict the distribution of a drug in the body. To more understand this concept, let's look at a simple calculation. Calculating the apparent volume of distribution. A drug is administered to a patient intravenously. The initial plasma concentration of the drug is 10 mg per liter, and the total amount of drug administered is 100 mg. The apparent volume of distribution for the drug is calculated to be 10 liters. However, over time, the drug distributes throughout the body and the plasma concentration of the drug decreases. The final plasma concentration of the drug is 2 mg per liter. The volume of distribution for the drug is calculated to be 50 liters. This example shows that volume of distribution is a more accurate measure of drug distribution than apparent volume of distribution, as it takes into account the distribution of the drug over time. Now let's have a look at key differences between volume of distribution versus apparent volume of distribution. Volume of distribution is a more accurate measure of drug distribution than apparent volume of distribution as it takes into account the distribution of the drug over time. Volume of distribution is a more complex parameter to calculate than apparent volume of distribution as it requires additional data such as the elimination rate of the drug. Volume of distribution is more useful for predicting the distribution of a drug in the body than apparent volume of distribution as it takes into account the distribution of the drug over time. Multiple factors can influence the volume of distribution and apparent volume of distribution of a drug. These factors can be categorized into drug-related factors, physiological factors, and environmental factors. Drug-related factors 1. Lipid solubility Highly lipophilic drugs tend to have a larger volume of distribution as they can easily penetrate cell membranes and distribute into tissues with high fat content, such as adipose tissue. 2. Protein binding. Drugs that are extensively bound to plasma proteins have a smaller volume of distribution as they are confined to the vascular compartment and cannot freely distribute into tissues. 3. Molecular size. Larger molecules tend to have smaller volumes of distribution as they have difficulty crossing cell membranes and are restricted to the vascular compartment. 4. Ionic state. Ionized drugs are generally less permeable through cell membranes and have smaller volume of distribution compared to their non-ionized counterparts. These are the drug-related factors affecting the volume of distribution. Physiological factors. 1. Age. The volume of distribution tends to decrease with age due to a loss of muscle mass and an increase in adipose tissue. 2. Gender. Men generally have a larger volume of distribution than women due to their higher muscle mass. 3. Pregnancy. The volume of distribution can increase during pregnancy due to hormonal changes and fluid shifts. 4. Underlying medical conditions. Certain medical conditions, such as liver disease or kidney disease, can alter the volume of distribution of drugs. These are the physiological factors affecting the volume of distribution. Environmental factors. 
1. Body Temperature Changes in body temperature can affect drug distribution, with lower temperatures leading to a smaller volume of distribution. 2. Blood pH Changes in blood pH can alter the ionization state of drugs, affecting their distribution. 3. Concurrent medications Interactions with other medications can alter the binding or metabolism of a drug, influencing its volume of distribution. 4. Dietary factors Certain dietary components such as grapefruit juice can inhibit drug metabolism and increase the volume of distribution. These are the environmental factors affecting the volume of distribution. It is important to consider these factors when interpreting the volume of distribution and apparent volume of distribution values, and making predictions about drug distribution and dosing. Well, that is the end of the detailed presentation about the volume of distribution. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more engaging content. Thanks for joining Farm Explorer today. Let's meet again with another interesting video.